that what's important to realize is that technology can never solve social problems, which doesn't mean technology doesn't play a role in addressing social problems. So I think that what's important about understanding sustainable development and um, sustainable democracies is thinking through um, participation um, and surveillance together. So um, we have to understand that this is not simply um, the internet will solve the world's problems or the internet is the most horrible thing on the earth and responsible for everything evil, um, but rather that it enables a certain kind of engagement that's always going to be risky. But I think in terms of if we want to talk about environmental sustainability, um, the problem with new media right now is the fact that it sucks in so much electricity. That if you think through server farms, if you think through the idea of saving things, like the idea, see you've printed this off, right? And people will say that's bad, right? Because you're destroying the world, right? But if you read it off a, a computer and you use the electricity, it's worse. And then it gets stored X, Y, and Z. So I think we need to think through um, the infrastructure, the technology it's in, and to think about new media at all the different levels. I think regulation is important. Um, I think that um, we need regulation, but I think that, again, fake news is complicated. I, it, would, it, it preceded real news. So you, again, you think through Pulitzer, you think through all the hoaxes in the history of journalism. Um, and there's a way in which we need to deal with the fact that throughout history, there has been um, these questions of misinformation and disinformation. Um, and sometimes when people put in place certain regulations, because this is new and never before happened, you can have incredible censorship. Um, so we need to think historically, and this is something that Heidi Torwek at UBC does, um, and she shows that sometimes these pushes for this regulation repeats what happened in Nazi Germany. So we need to think through the complexity of information, the complexity of regulation. Yeah, so facial recognition systems are huge. Um, San Francisco, of course, was the first US city to ban facial recognition systems. Um, a lot of the problem with these uh, recognition systems or even social credit systems is that they close the future. They assume that because of your past behavior or because of the past behavior of people who are like you, they're gonna be able to assess what you will do and they'll put in a system so what it will unfold. So you lose, um, you lose the future because it must repeat the past. Um, and I think that as well, in order to intervene into this, we need to understand the ways in which they fail. These systems fail all the time. But we also need to be a little perverse in how we use these systems. So the example I always give is global climate change models. Mm -hmm. So glo global climate change models, what they do is they look at the past and past behavior and they make a prediction of the future based on if you did not stop your past behavior. But the point of this isn't to say, yes, you know, this is the future we want, you know, let's, let's do two degrees Celsius immediately. The point is to say, this is the future we don't want. And let's open the future. So what if we use some of the machine learning in place that analyzes the past, tells us and shows the discrimination that exists in society, and then use that as a way to intervene and create better futures. Uh, I think that the concept of digital democracy is, at least for our lab, one that is fundamentally interdisciplinary. That also thinks through the tension between digital and democracy, but also wants to respect people and to say that these tools can be used in ways to open up conversations. They can't solve problems, but they can start conversations in ways for us to work together to build something that's democratic. It's always a process, it's always a struggle, um, but that's why we're doing this. I don't think we should save our data.
data. I think that one thing that we can say is why is all this data being saved? Um, what's interesting is the EU, of course, has been at the forefront of everything, um, and they have the right to be forgotten law. Now, what's interesting about machine learning is that if you think of how these programs are trained, right, so they take in all this past data and that becomes um, part of the factors in the different neural nets, that means the distance between algorithm and data is not there anymore. So therefore, if you say, I want to be forgotten, you have to take down the algorithm. You have to open up the algorithm. And I think that's important. And I think that's a way to, to think through things and open it up. But I mean, it's, it's a question we have to ask ourselves. The, given global climate change, why are we having all these server farms? Why are we storing all this data? So everyone right now is talking about ethics. Everyone is saying, like, we have to talk about artificial intelligence and ethics. And usually when they say this, it's because they don't want to talk about regulation. Um, because then it's a one-to-one -one relation. They want to, you know, like, let's all be good people. Um, and I think that we need to think through um, regulation and its relationship to artificial intelligence. And I think that ethics is important. It's fundamental to how a society operates. It's um, a, a, a self-other relationship that's fundamental, but it can't be the way that this is solved because this is a collective issue.